Welcome to Managing Custom Images on OCI. My name is Larry Beausoleil, OCI Enablement Product Manager, and I'm going to be taking you through some of this journey. Some of the key objectives for this particular module is managing custom images, disaster considerations, cross-region copy using object storage. So the first thing that we want to talk about is which process and why. Uh, one of the first ideas on this is we can import an image so we can bring one from on-prem to OCI and then we can create that and use uh, custom images from there or we can create a custom image on OCI from one of the provided platform images uh, where we can install what we need and create a golden image that we launch from. Uh, we can also use uh, published images with user data. So if we take one of the platform images, Oracle images, uh, we can inject user data to install scripts or manage, uh, manage the OCI instance at that point. Uh, and it's still something that you can, you can run updates from that, but if you start running updates with user data, then you kind of lose your consistency. So this would be on initial launch, or I have a golden image and I just want it to pull the new script uh, for what I'm using. Another option would be using the marketplace images. Uh, so if you see kind of a screenshot here where it says partner images, uh, apps names, and different publishers, uh, that would be one of the reasons to select that. If you're using something on-prem, uh, such as a firewall, and you need to kind of continue that into OCI, uh, this would be one option. Some of the best practices for your instance when you first create it and first launch it uh, is making sure that it is encrypted. So security encryption in transit and at rest, uh, locking down rules upon creation. Uh, and by default, Oracle locks down uh, the rules, the firewall rules inside of the OS. So it's a matter of if you need something open, you would have to go in and actually open that up. Uh, you would be able to lock, uh, go into SSH for Linux or RDS but you still kind of want to lock those down uh, when you create your instance to maybe your known site or range from on-prem or inside the VCN and locking that down a little bit more. Uh, so that really depends on you as a customer, what your end goals are, what this instance is going to be doing. Uh, another piece when you first create your instance kind of best practice is making sure that you run uh, run update or sudo yum update upon creation and making sure Windows is up to date uh, when you first launch it. Then when you create, when you have that golden image, you're going to launch from that, but you're not going to regularly update uh, from the golden image. You're going to have that as a cycle. So you're not going to launch the golden image, run updates, and then provision it for for uh, production. Uh, the reason you don't want to do that is you do lose consistency at that point because then you maybe have a newer version of Apache running on some of your instances so you may have some random issues. Uh, it would be better to have a proper cycle, a uh, life cycle for that to where you maybe every two weeks uh, you create a new golden image. Uh, so you launch it, update it, and then launch from that one after doing testing. Uh, so that's one of the key pieces here is making sure that security is implemented. And this is from multiple layers of security, making sure SSH is locked down, RDP is locked down. And we do have some more documentation that kind of talks about this and talks about how Oracle provides security and how they kind of lock things down upon creation. The first piece uh, for managing custom images is considering well, we have a virtual machine, and then we're going to create a custom image. Uh, custom image is the boot volume. Uh, for the secondary volumes, that's going to be managed separately. So you're going to be using a backup or clone the block volumes. Uh, and then from there, you would be creating an instance configuration so that you can connect those block volumes uh, to a custom image so that you can launch multiple. Uh, and with having that custom image, kind of the process you see here is we start with our virtual machine. We go in and install. We we SSH in or we RDP in, install all of our applications, our configurations, create the custom image, 
and then we can launch as many as we want. Uh, if we use instance configuration, uh, we can launch, you know, 10, 50, at, you know, at once, or we're launching individuals each time we launch from that custom image. So the next kind of step here, uh, we can use custom image with user data. Uh, so custom image with user data would be launching an instance. Uh, so you go to launch the instance, you click on advanced options, and then you can add a configuration script to the instance, uh, as you kind of see here from the screenshot. So this would be user data, and then you can either choose the cloud init script file, or you can paste the cloud init script file. Uh, and I'm going to show an example of this uh, in just a second. Uh, but a consideration here is basically anything that you can run on Linux or Windows can be injected into them. Uh, do some testing, make sure it runs successfully, and then you can paste it in here. Uh, and this would be helping to speed up maybe your custom image creation uh, for your golden image, or if you already have a golden image, bringing it up to date, and then you log into it, verify everything, and then you can create a custom image from that. Uh, so this just kind of helps you with a little more advanced option uh, upon creation. So an example of user data would be this script here. Uh, so this is doing a lot. So if we break this down, uh, this is basically, it's going to install Apache. It's going to make sure that service is running. Uh, it's doing some configurations to the index.html file. Uh, so it can kind of output some information for us. So this would be one way to set this up. Uh, if we're, if we want the information output it, output somewhere, maybe we want some stuff sent to log files. We want, you know, on boot, this created what happened or on boot, you know, something's, something successfully, uh, everything went successful. We want that output into a log file. Uh, so that's some of the stuff we can configure here. So there's lots of different options uh, for this. Uh, maybe we want to know what the public IP address is. Uh, so we'll grab that information and, and send it maybe out to another location. This is just kind of, you know, sending it to the index.html. Uh, uh, and from there, once we run that, once we launch the instance, uh, then we can hop in and we can actually do a curl against local host or go to the public IP address uh, and see what our output is here. So if I curl local host, uh, which is 127.0.0.1, uh, then this will show us the information we injected into our instance. Uh, so this is just kind of an example output. Uh, and you can you can provide your your own output or how, however you want to do this, but this tells us this, you know, it's Oracle Linux server, it's version 7.7, 7. uh, it's variant, you know, it's the actual pretty name uh, if you need that information. Uh, and then it also tells you uh, this does a bug report. Uh, it gives you the public IP address and gives you some other information. Uh, but this is something that you can write your own uh, your own user data script for however you want and you know send this out. The next piece we should take a look at or, or think about is disaster considerations. And what does that look like? So if we're built out in one region and we need to you know, migrate to another region, uh, we have our custom image. Uh, with our custom image that we created in maybe US West, uh, we want to migrate it to US East to kind of have that ready to go. Uh, and this gets a, gets into other topics, talking about your RTO, RPO, uh, and backup uh, plans. But to do that for a virtual machine and to get this up and running, uh, you would have cross-region copy of your instance or custom image. Uh, and that can be done with uh, object storage. So you create a pre-authenticated request to a particular object or just name it. Uh, and then you can migrate that from one region to another. Uh, so this is it's something that is pretty quick uh, to do. Uh, depending on the size of the image may take a little time. Uh, and then you can launch that new custom image from US East once you have it copied over. And once it's copied over, you could have uh, user data run in there. Uh, some things to consider with your custom image. If I have an SSH 
key pair uh, inside of my custom image when I copy it over uh, that will be there uh, so if I add a new one on launch then I can still use the old one so this might be somewhere where I actually use user data to strip out the old SSH key pairs uh, to make sure that it's only creating a brand new one uh, so just some things to consider from disaster considerations security best practices uh, for transferring this A quick knowledge check on this one. Uh, so what is required in order to migrate custom image to another region? Uh, fast connect from one region to another, pre-authenticated request for an object in the other region, create an instance configuration that will launch the instance in a new region, launch an instance in the new region to copy data. Uh, the answer for this one is going to be B, uh, pre-authenticated request for an object in the other region. Thank you for joining me today on this journey through managing custom images on OCI. Uh, if you want to give it a try, you can go to oracle.com forward slash cloud forward slash free and create an account and start your journey today. Thank you.